The reason that we pursue fundamental research at CMRI is because we don't want to be tinkering at the edges using the things that we already know. We want to be discovering things that we don't even know exist yet. And it's these discoveries, when they're made, that are going to completely transform children's health. And some of that transformation is going to be in ways that we can't even imagine today. Every time you discover a new process or something new that nobody saw before or suspected before, something so exciting. And if on top of that, you discover that it could have some application to cure some disease, yeah, it's fantastic. And that's why we do science, to take the exciting discoveries in the lab into the hospital next door. I really like the idea that something that I'm doing you know, has a real chance of impacting a family's life really trying to give a healthy start to children. That's really what we're trying to do. We work mostly on a molecule called telomerase. It works on the ends of the chromosomes. So in most of our normal cells, the ends of our chromosomes, which are called telomeres, are getting shorter as our cells divide and we age. Telomerase is present when we're developing as an embryo and in our stem cells, in our blood, but most of our normal cells shut down telomerase when we're an adult. Cancer cells find a way to reactivate telomerase and therefore keep their telomeres lengthening and dividing. And this is what enables cancer cells to be able to divide indefinitely. If we can block telomerase, this will then cause the telomeres in cancer cells to shorten again and the cells won't be able to divide anymore. A collaborative effort, which our lab was a part of in the children's hospital, that identified a specific protein that binds to the telomere called TPP1. And it was the work in our lab that showed a mutation in TPP1 reduced telomerase ability to reach the telomere. We found a patient at the children's hospital by the name of Deandra Edmondson. She had suffered from bone marrow failure and aplastic anemia since she was eight years old. We were in a perfect position to immediately do the experiments to check whether this mutation is likely to be disease-causing in Deandra. I was in hospital every couple of days getting platelet transfusions. I always had to be close to a hospital, which meant I wasn't able to go on holidays at all. People with short telomeres eventually they need a bone marrow transplant. But if they're treated like other patients who undergo chemotherapy before having the transplant, they'll die. Because we now knew what her genetic defect was, it had a direct impact on her treatment. She was treated with an experimental treatment specific for people with short telomeres. And now, finally, I've got that freedom that I can travel now. Our goal for the future is to develop therapies for both cancer and for short telomere syndromes. We need to find out alternative ways of treating cancers with potentially less side effects. At the same time, keeping an eye out for things that can boost telomerase action for people like Deandra. Finding a cure is definitely possible and hopefully they do. At CMRI we have a very strong support from donation and that makes a huge difference. It means, yeah, we can answer questions that we wouldn't be able to answer if we didn't have this kind of Funding. Last year, the Australian Cancer Research Fund gave us a $2 million grant to buy seven new microscopes. That has enabled us to, to look at telomeres in the cell with a level of detail that we weren't able to do before. We can see actually if there is a DNA damage marker that goes to telomeres that we can see only through the microscopes by doing this technique of immunofluorescence. The technology and tools that we now have at our disposal help us not only do our research faster but better. This is greatly speeding up the progress of the research projects in the lab. Sometimes, you know, when you're just in the lab doing the same thing over and over, you lose sight of what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. I think just sort of stepping back and going, people are actually giving you their money. You think you have that obligation to the donors and the public to really work hard and try and make it happen. I can see that here everybody is really passionate about what they are doing and it's, it's so important. Faced with all the odds of being a scientist, scientists definitely should be determined, they should be, you know, stubborn. There's no way I'm going to give up. If there's a problem, I'm solving it and I will find the answer to help people. That's what's really special about this place, is the ability to combine the basic science with the big ideas for treatments and hopefully one day cures to improve the lives of our kids. I would love to encourage people to donate because the work that scientists have done has helped me dramatically. So I would 100% encourage people to donate.